Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth episode of Things You May Have Missed in The Witcher 3. Accept my apologies for this one took a while longer than I expected, for various reasons I won't bore you with now. If you've missed the previous ones, feel free to check the playlist down in the description. But now let's focus on this one. In it, we shall be looking at Novigrad. The actual town and its surroundings are full of quests, NPCs, small events and whatnot, and as such, there will probably be a lot I do not mention in this video, and I'll try to focus on the more interesting and major things that I think you may have missed. Alright, enough lollygagging, let's get right into the thing you may have missed in Novigrad number one. It's a rather small detail, but it made me laugh way back when I discovered it, so I couldn't go out without mentioning it. It takes place early on during the Carnal Sins quest, the one about the serial killer who almost got Priscilla. You arrive at the morgue along with Dr. Um, Joachim von Graz? Joachim von Graz. Anyway, you end up inspecting a corpse to figure out what the serial killer's motivation might be. One of the body parts you can expect is the genitals. His genitals. We ought to inspect those. I sincerely doubt they bear any relation to the matter. We'll see. Pull down his trousers and... Shit. Uh, syphilis, actually. Early stages. No sign of diffusion. And the doctor has a unique line if you decide to inspect them more than once. His genitals. We ought to inspect those. I see. You clearly find gonads fascinating. I fear I don't share your passion. Let's focus on other parts of his anatomy, shall we? That's it. Short and simple, but it caught me by surprise. Okay, moving on to thing you may have missed, number two. We're now taking a trip outside of Novigrad towards this location on the map. As you get closer to the spot, the Witcher 3 romance theme kicks in. Not so fast, Roach. And you stumble upon a bench, which offers a rather nice view. It would appear that people of Novigrad's elite go out on dates here. If you stay long enough, meditating and observing, you'll see that several couples take turns visiting the place and what often happens is the woman sits down while the man does some impressive feats in front of her. Some would do push-ups, others would dance rather provocatively and they usually don't seem too keen on having you around them. Shame you cannot take your own love interest there, but there you go. As I hit something with my hand accidentally. Um, okay, I hate to go from romance to burning people alive, but I must. I'm in and so, thing you may have missed, number three. You remember Moritz? Moritz? Moritz. Uh, the annoying sorcerer guy who badmouths Triss at the Vagelbuds masquerade? Well, turns out he wasn't as good as he thought and got caught by the witch hunters. If you go past Glory Gate, one of Novigrad's entrances, at any point between completing the Masquerade quest and starting the Mage Evacuation one with Triss, called um, Now or Never, I believe, you will see a pyre with a bunch of witch hunters gathered around it. If you just walk away and do nothing, after a while the witch hunters will be gone and all that's left of the pyre will be his charred remains. However, if you kill the witch hunters, you get a scene where he is freed. I know you. A writ Stiefenthal, right? Triss's friend. Didn't see the slightest reason to flee Novigrad. The same. Just singed. I thank you, Witcher. And I appreciate I was wrong. Here's my advice. And it's good advice. Find Triss. Lame Duck might still be willing to help you. And he will also be seen briefly during Triss's quest, now or never, as he apparently joined her despite calling her a lame goose. Or was it a lame duck? Lame Duck might still be willing to help you. Yeah, I think so. Silly Goose was what Yennefer called herself. I was quite the silly goose. Time for thing number four. And as I was reminded of Yennefer in Blood and Wine, let's stick to that expansion for a while and talk about Vivian. I've made a video about this a while ago, but I just couldn't leave it out of this one. 
So, after completing the Blood and Wine expansion, and provided that you resolved the Vivian situation by using the Egg Ritual, allowing her to live normally for another 7 years, she can be found at Novigrad's docks, looking and feeling pretty good. What's more, she also talks about visiting Skellige, but she's never found there. And I have a small history of looking for Vivian in Skellige, and I finally found a way to uh, make her appear with a console command, and I made a whole other video, which you can check in the description if you're interested, about me stalking her all around the place. So yeah, really nice addition in my opinion. Maybe I should have left that for things missed in Blood and Wine, but I'll think of something else for that. Okay, that's enough for Vivian. Let's move on to thing you may have missed. Where are we? Uh, number five. Audrin, here, boy. Audrin, ten tankards onwards, and your guts are like a stone. Can't even see your prick. It's time to head for home. Yes, none other than Audrin himself. Lying about beside Novigrad's docks at this location, you can find exactly him. By his side is a merchant who sells. 215 empty bottles. Whether he collects them and resells them, or perhaps Audrin drank them all, who knows. Additionally, throughout the game there are many notes referencing Audrin's um, various amusing mischiefs. I must admit, however, that I have not found every piece of text that I'm showing you right now myself, some of them were shown to me by viewers in the comment section of my other videos, so to those people, thank you very much. Feel free to pause the video here if you wish to read them. And that was it about Audrin, one of the most memorable names in The Witcher 2, I'd say. Moving on to Thing You May Have Missed, number 6. I'm back! I won! Yeah! I have made a video about this a while ago, and it's about an extra dialogue option that appears during the Elusive Thief contract in Novigrad. You know the one, where eventually you end up chasing a Doppler who turns into Geralt and fights him? Well, if you happen to do this contract in the specific time frame between interrogating the spy Yamurlak and finding Dudu, you get the chance to ask the Doppler from the quest to impersonate Menga and potentially help you save Dandelion. I'll spare you, but you gotta help me in return. I need you to assume someone's form, Caleb Menga's. I need you to sail to Temple Isle and... What? I'll not do it! I'd never do it! You might as well kill me now! Save me the torture Menga would put me through! I was so surprised when I saw this. Details like that are a big part of why I love this game so much and why I still play it and make videos about it to this day. You might say that it doesn't really matter since he won't help you anyway, but in my mind it makes the game feel much more immersive. And that was... I keep hitting things. So we are going up shit fucking creek with next one trouble <laughs> good one we're not having trouble we're up shit fucking creek thing you may have missed number seven it's about the wooden beast contract you get on your way to novigrad where it turns out the monster is actually a group of scoyatel there are a few outcomes of this quest, but the particular one I want to focus on is when Geralt tells the elves that he is not about to get involved in the matter, and yet still reports about them to the quest giver. Do what you will. I'm not about to get involved. There's no beast in the woods, just Scoia'tael. Scoia'tael, you say? Initially, it doesn't seem like anything special is about to happen, until their leader, Vernosil, 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 ambushes you from a barn or something. Remember me, Witcher, Vernosil, the Skoya tell you betrayed. Right next to the fast travel post by the bridge here. I apologize for not having the map location, but this is either Portside Gate or Glory Gate. In fact, I think it's Glory Gate based on the treasure in the water over here. Anyway. She seems to only appear at night, but if you choose to run away from her, she'll always be there. Uh, and as I'm talking about the Scoia'tael, I suddenly feel regret for not having Yorveth in the game. 
That has got to be one of my biggest complaints story-wise, especially after playing The Witcher 2, and yeah, I played The Witcher 2 after The Witcher 3. Anyway, I'm curious to know which choice you think is best in The Woodland Beast and why. Okay, before we proceed, allow me to take a moment and ask you to give this video a like, if you've enjoyed it, that is, and even enable notifications if you wish, though I gotta warn you, I do not only post Witcher videos, they, however, are, as you can probably tell, my favorite ones to make. Finally, I'd like to thank the people who've chosen to support me on Patreon or become members of my YouTube channel for helping make all of this possible. Thank you very much, guys. All right, let's move on with thing you may have missed number eight. This is something that I think is much better if discovered at night, as the place is much creepier. It's found to the side of Novigrad here, and it's full of corpses and cages and burning bodies and creepy tools along the walls, and it's all empty. Not so bad during the day, though, as it turns out, this is Novigrad's crematorium. But where am I supposed to lay flowers? Where will I pour libations for my son? They said during the sermon, instead of buying gifts for the dead, you should give offerings of gold to the eternal fire. You do well not to pester folk. And now that we've mentioned Audrin and Yorveth, here's another character that shows up during the day inside, referencing The Witcher 2. Looking for some potion ingredients. There's been a mistake. I'm no mage. No, no, no. I'm an apothecary. Mm -hmm. Could swear I saw you at the summit in Loch Muin. Uh, that may have been my twin brother. Stop it. To the eternal fire, I'm a boil to be lanced same as you. Relax, not about to turn you in. Oh, what do you want? How'd you end up here? Crematory wouldn't exactly be my first choice if I needed to hide. I wound up here by accident. At first, after the slaughter at Loch Muin, I hid in the woods near Ban Glean. But how long can one survive on roots? Finally, I could stand it no more and boarded a raft bound for Novigrad. Once here, my coin soon ran out. I began to beg, and thus met the King of Beggar's men. They gave me a choice. I could start working for him, or they would break my legs. Wouldn't mind a few rounds of cards. Before I move on, here's a bit of a story about this crematorium. I had initially discovered this place on my own during the night and I had planned on eventually putting it in a video like this as some sort of creepy secret place near Novigrad. But then someone left a comment on one of my other videos talking about the crematorium, and so I went to check online, and it turns out it's the same exact place. So I suppose partial credit goes to whoever that person was. The name escapes me, but thank you. Okay. Time for thing number 9, we're getting close to the end. I now realize I should have probably put this at number 2 after I talked about Mr. Von Graz. Von Graz. Did you know that during the section where you chase after the witch hunter who has dandelion, in addition to the tracks you can see on the ground, there are several other items that can be looted. Those are actually much easier to spot if you do this on foot. There is dandelion's perfume. Sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. Nui de Beauclair. Dandelion uses it by the bucket. Trail should be clear. The scent of which you can follow, but more importantly, I think, it's positioned soon after the crossroads on one of the two roads, so if the single versus multiple sets of hoof tracks is confusing, you can always use the perfume as an extra clue here, which shows you the path that leads to Dandelion. Damn it, followed the wrong trail. Gotta look for a set of single hoof marks. Heavily laden horse. But she's sharp. Trot straight to me as soon as I whistle. Ah, fuck off. There's also his ring. Dandelion must have dropped it on purpose. Knew I'd follow. And a piece of his writings. Crumpled sheet. The day, my bloom, when you recall this heart you rent through cruel denial, words of doom. <laughs> Must have broken his heart to part with that little ditty. And for some reason I think there was something more, but I'm either confused or I simply forgot to record the last thing, so um, I guess you'll tell me if there's something else. Alright, the time has come for the last thing, but don't rush to leave because I have a few small bonus ones that come from my viewers, 
after the 10th. So the final bit is something I actually forgot to mention back when I made my Velen video and talked about the crones and their sort of secret outcome. It is the fact that if you release their mother, provided they send you to kill her, she will free the children and apparently take them or help them get to Novigrad school. During the Broken Flowers quest, when time comes to speak to Marabella, Gee up! The snakely whip rose skyward. Gee ho! Crack! She reined the beast in. The stallion danced betwixt her thighs. Lava bathed its chinny chin chin. Sorry, don't know much about poetry. You can find a note on her table that mentions the children's names. And of course, they match perfectly with those of the orphans from the Crookback Bog. So there we have it. Those are the 10 things I thought you may have missed in Novigrad. Now let's get to the few extra bits that come from my comment sections. First, from someone whose name I did not record, forgive me about it, please make a comment below if that was you. I learned that if you choose to enter Horson's Casino peacefully, aka without Cleaver's men, you can find a book with the names of people who owe him money. And apparently they are the people from the high-stakes Gwent tournament in Novigrad, including the spy Sasha. Also, a small addition from me here, you can get a reference from when Geralt was knighted. I don't play plebs. Actually, I was knighted. Or for you, Geth. <laughs> I guess it falls to me, to dub thee, Geralt of Wivia. Consider my objections withdrawn, sir. The second bonus thing from, um, how do you pronounce this? Elishka Tonsarova. Is the stress really in the end? So she managed to translate the writings on the walls that I couldn't from my Things You Missed About Triss video. Apparently two are in English saying scumbags and sorceresses are whores. Can I say whores on YouTube? And the other two are in Polish saying pretty sure that's pronounced kurwa. Kurwa. Which means whore once again. And charodziejki? Charodziejki. Eh, fairly close, I'd say, which means witches. So, thank you, Eliska. And third, from... Alex Ernahold. Now, he says that during the race where you meet Molly, if you choose the Redanian chestnut horse before you've seen Radovid or his ship, Geralt will simply say that he chooses the chestnut. But if you have met Radovid or the ship, Geralt will comment on how Radovid is nearby and so on and so forth. Radovid's encamped nearby. Redanian chestnut might want to impress its king. I'll not ride with you, but I shall bet on a steed. Now, I have two saves before Novigrad, but on both of them I've already been to Oxenford to seek the Baron's daughter, so I might have also passed by Radovid's ship. And in both cases I did have that Radovid-related line, so I can confirm that it exists, but sadly I cannot show you any evidence that he does not always say that. So I guess you'll tell me down in the comments. Nevertheless, thank you, Alex. And with that, we are done. Once again, sorry that this video took longer than expected. Thank you very much for watching, for supporting me and for making all these comments that helped me make this video hopefully a bit more interesting. And in general, simply comments that keep me motivated to continue making more and more Witcher-related content. So tell me what you thought about everything I've said, did you miss any or all of these things? Probably not all, but I hope you missed at least one, or at least thought the video was alright. So yeah, until the next one, stay tuned and be good.